Doing some more review for our first semester final in geometry today. Here we're talking unit five, which is all about triangle congruence, okay? So these are the topics we're covering in this video, congruent triangle parts, how to prove triangles congruent. Uh, we're gonna use side, 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 angle, side, and those things. Uh, we're gonna give you two proofs, one where we prove it, uh, two triangles to be congruent. And then the second one, we're gonna use those two triangles that are congruent to show that their congruent parts are also congruent. So let's get into it. All right, if you're one of my students, I'll put the number from the review packet that we're going over. If you're not one of my students, this problem should also help you with triangle congruencies. That said, this first one says triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. This first top part here, kind of underline it, is called a congruent statement. We have to use that to identify all pairs of congruent corresponding parts parts and then also mark up our triangles, okay? So there should be three angles and three side lengths that are, or three pairs of those things that are congruent. So if we look here, um, our congruent statement will help us out. So first off, angle A is going to be congruent with, since see how that's like the first one in our congruent statement? Well, the first one over here is angle X. So I can say angle A is congruent to angle X. And then I can mark that up in my picture. I'll give each of those kind of one curve. All right, one loop. Same thing, B is gonna be kind of corresponding with Y and C is corresponding with Z. So it'll look like this um, if we mark those angles up. Okay, again, that was right from my congruent statement. B and Y were in the second position. C and Z were in the third position. All right, if I mark up the triangle, let's see, B was going with Y, so I'll give each of those two, two loops there. And then C, I'll give three, and Z, I'll also give three, okay? So those are our angles. Now we also have three pairs of congruent side lengths and we can use our, um, our congruent statement in a similar way. This time we have to use those two letters. So for example, use the first two. AB is gonna go with XY. So I'd say side AB is congruent to side XY like this, all right? If I mark up the picture, AB is this kind of vertical side, so I'll put, give that maybe one tick mark, and XY, same thing like this, okay? I'll do the same thing for uh, AC and XZ, as well as BC and YZ. I'll mark that up for you. Okay, so I wrote those out and I also marked up the pictures and you can clearly see now that we have three congruent angles and three congruent side lengths to make the six total uh, congruent corresponding parts of these triangles. All right, let's read this next one. It says, how would you prove triangle HMJ is congruent to triangle KML? All right, those two triangles over there. It says given or if maybe HM is congruent to KM and also JM is congruent to LM. Well, let's first maybe mark these two things in the picture and see what that gives us, right? First off, HM and KM. HM and KM, I'm gonna put a tick mark here and here to show those are congruent as well as JM and LM. JM and LM. So I see two, I have two sides, all right? Two sides in this triangle and two sides in this triangle and they're both kind of corresponding sides. So what I need to figure out is how can I prove these two triangles to be congruent? If you remember our five different ways we prove triangles to be congruent, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and hypotenuse leg, right? If I think about those five, I'm seeing I need two that have sides and then I also see that we have vertical angles here and here. So that's gonna give me side angle side in this left triangle, as well as side angle side in the right triangle, and they match up. Therefore, this is gonna be proved by side angle side triangle congruence. All right, remember those five reasons I just listed out? We're gonna use those to help us with these two problems, kind of two for the price of one here. It says, why is triangle ADC congruent to triangle BDC? And if you look at what we have, anytime you see two triangles butted up against each other, what we can say is that that line that they share is also gonna be congruent in both triangles, okay? Since they share it, that's congruent, all right? There's another one, I'll just mark that up right now. All right, and if we look at what we have here, we have a side, an angle, and a side, right? This is also 90 degrees since it's a linear pair. Side angle, side in this one, also side angle, side in the top one. It kind of looks like hypotenuse leg because it's a right angle, however, we don't have the hypotenuse. Remember the hypotenuse is across from the right angle? We don't know anything about that. So all we can say here is side angle, Oops, side angle, side congruence. All right, what about this one? Again, I marked it up because those triangles are butted up against each other. And then I also have an angle, side angle, angle, side angle. So I think this one is angle, side angle, triangle congruence. All right, if you look at the first of the two proofs that we're going to do, it's not asking us to prove that two triangles are congruent, but rather two parts 
of those triangles are congruent, which means that our last reason is going to be CPCTC, where corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, okay? Now, I'm real quick gonna fill in my two givens right here and my reasons. If you don't know how to do that, how to fill in your given statements, I'll put a good video up here that you can watch. Um, otherwise, I'll do that real quick for you. All right, now that I got my two givens written into the proof, uh, I need to mark up the picture with what those givens are telling me. Okay, so for example, this first one says SO is perpendicular to MP. All right, well, SO is this kind of vertical line, MP is this horizontal line. And if they're perpendicular, what that's going to apply eventually is that these are right angles. All right, so I'll go ahead and draw those in there. However, I also have to say a line about that, that they are right angles. So let me do that really quick. And to make this easier, maybe I'll call this angle one and angle two. So I'm gonna say angle one and angle two are right. They are right angles and that's for line three, okay? The reason for that is the definition of perpendicular. Okay, and then in parentheses, I put also the perpendicular symbol. Maybe your teacher lets you write that instead of the word perpendicular. Okay, so once I know that they are right, now I still have to say they're congruent to each other. Remember, we need at least three things, like side, angle, side, angle, side, angle. So three things to be congruent in order to show these triangles are congruent. In this case, since these are both right, I can say angle one is congruent to angle two. And the reason for that is RACT, the right angle congruence theorem, where all right angles are congruent to each other. So I'm gonna say right angle congruence theorem. And that is RACT, okay? Now, that's all from kind of my first given that said that SO was perpendicular to MP. That gave me that those two angles are right and they're also congruent to each other. Now, what's my second given said? It said SO bisects MP. Well, if SO is bisecting MP, that means that MP is cut exactly in half. Or in other words, this first part, MO, is congruent to OP. All right, so again, I'm gonna write that into my proof and my reason is gonna be the definition of a segment bisector. All right, so we're almost done. Uh, we have, looks like, maybe three lines left here. And the next thing I probably wanna to prove to show that these two triangles are congruent is that this side is reflexive, right? SO is shared by both of those triangles. So I can say SO is congruent to itself, SO, by the reflexive property. Okay, and then I think that gives me enough information to show these two triangles are congruent to each other, okay? Because I have side, angle, side. So I'm gonna say triangle MOS, triangle MOS is congruent. Now you have to be careful that you write your congruent statement the right way, okay? MOS, well on the other side, that's gonna go POS, okay? So uh, triangle POS, and then the reason for that we said was side, angle, side, and the other one side, angle, side. So I'll say S, A, S there, side, angle, side, triangle congruence. And then lastly, remember my CPCTC, I'm trying to prove this, right? I guess I should have probably written that in earlier, but I can say SM, side SM is congruent to side SP, okay? And you'll notice right now in the triangle, SM and SP, we don't really have any markings for that, but we now know that since those two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side, all their parts are congruent to each other. In fact, you could even draw that in if you want to and say those two sides are congruent. And again, the reason for that is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, last proof we're gonna cover in this video is asking us to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other, right? And then we don't have to do any CPCTC stuff in this one, we'll just stop at that point, okay? So real quick, I'm gonna fill in my givens as well as my proof statement. All right, so I got that all filled out. Now I have to mark up the picture with what I just filled out. So this first one says that T is the midpoint of XR. Well, XR is this line, and if T is the midpoint of that, that means that RT is gonna be congruent to TX, all right? So RT is congruent to TX. I have to write that into the proof because I marked it up in the picture.
Okay, and then the reason for that was also the definition of a midpoint because that's the kind of vocabulary word that we use to show that that is true. All right, that's all from my first given. My second given told me that angle R is congruent to angle X. Well, that's already um, one of those congruent angles I can just mark up in the picture right away. All right, angle R, I'll put one tick mark here, or one uh, loop, I should say, is congruent to angle X. So I have two of my three parts I need to show these triangles are congruent, which means this last line, line four, the one that's empty, is that third part that I need to fill out, okay? And it looks like here I have vertical angles, right? So let's see, I'm gonna say these two are congruent to each other. And it looks like that's angle QTR. Angle QTR is congruent to, now you have to mark this up the right way or write it the correct way. Q, remember, corresponds with V. If you're not sure of that, you can look back at your proof statement where there's a congruent statement there. And you can say VTX, angle VTX. Those two are the congruent angles. The reason for that is vertical angles. All right, so we got vertical angles listed out there and that should be enough now to show these two triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle in the left one, angle, side, angle in the right one. So I'm gonna say A, S, A. Did this video help you out? If it did, please help me out by liking it down below. And then also you might find this video helpful as you continue to study for your first semester geometry final.